Time to sort it out here over 7,000 metres. It'll be one short lap on the very outside without those tight turns, and it'll be four long laps. Narrow twist, turns, muds, elbows, carnage over 1,500 metres, 7,000 metres in total. The first time the under 23 women have stepped up 7,000 metres. As you can see, I think with that longer distance, I don't think athletes are in too big of a rush to this first corner. This is the three, in fact, scratched out four Britons making their presence felt up the front here and making Keith Tim. We expect her to go to the front from the gun and essentially do what Innes Fitzgerald and Axel Van Christensen did and make this a true test of strength because on paper, on current form, making Keith could just be a class above this field. Well, that is a possibility. It's a strong possibility, but nobody likes things to be too predictable whether it's track and field athletics road racing or cross country i think there's something nice about surprises and shocks and megan keith does come here after that silver last year as an extraordinarily strong favorite slaughtered everybody in the uk trials a couple of weeks ago in liverpool she won by 53 seconds nearly a minute a margin of victory so she should be head and shoulders above most of this field but expect the unexpected as they say will somebody come out of that pack and live with the Britain through the first half of this race. The core of France tried very hard to do it in the first race. It's worth somebody go with Megan Keith, who's already at the front with a minute and a half on the clock. Yeah, the two Polish athletes there just in a British sandwich there at the moment. Britain very much to the fore, perhaps a team instruction. One of these teams will have different managers within the British team and they could be doling out specific instructions and perhaps on this narrow course there was an instruction to the British team to get up there early get away from the carnage you see Maria Ferreira there back in fifth place the Spaniard she'll be looking to make an impact and perhaps win first of what could be a few medals in the under 23 category she was 13th recently at the Atapuerca cross country a good line of form there to test against Megan Keith who was fifth there however there was 90 seconds between them which as we discussed about Megan Keith's current form speaks volumes for just how impressive she has been this cross country season well second third and fourth places from last year's race go here so uh, she will have competition Megan Keith the champion of course Nadia Badocletti who won last year retained her title from Dublin 2021 is in the senior race today but uh, Megan Keith calling the shots at the moment she will run a measured race here I thought she was very confident at yesterday's press conference quietly confident apparently it was her first ever press conference she might have to get used to that but uh, the athlete coach by Ross Cairns from Inverness beginning to open a gap in the pack just one Polish athlete gone with her is that Breza of Poland it is indeed Olympia Brescia that is in second place she is setting her stall out early and doing the daring thing is it foolish or is it brave to go with Megan Keith she is making the best effort at the moment you see just that line of Brits like the teammates lining up behind their captain and Megan Keith before we've even reached one kilometer as we come through the finish line here has got about a 12 10 12 meter advantage with Brescia leading the charge and it is Munnanen of Finland another big medal contender now taking up the pursuit and I think that's sensible let the first 800 meters pass get into position and then start settling into your pace and where you want to be but the big question now for Munnanen is do I want to settle back and race for silver measure my effort or do I want to risk it all Richard Dye trying and go for gold against the formidable Megan Keith. Well, it's going to script at the moment, Carl, because Blomqvist of Finland in second place, very, very experienced. And she's got great speed. She's a 406, 1500 meter runner. She was eighth last year, placed well in the top 10. But Keith just trying to get that gap, sort of snap that psychological link between the two. If you can get 20, 30 metres, then you're kind of away. Whereas when it's eight or nine metres like that, I think the chaser still feels that they're sort of in contact with you. Certainly, yeah. That's such a big psychological help to Munna now. If she could just claw that 10 metres down to three, four, five metres, she could just establish contact with Megan Keith psychologically take the pressure off even though physically we know Megan Keith will be putting this field to the sword 
a rugby coach I know once said that find out what the opposition doesn't like and do it a lot and I think a lot of Megan Keats opposition will not want to run at this pace this early in a 7k cross country race and she is saying to them if you want to win gold that's exactly what you're going to have to do and if you try you might just sacrifice your individual medal chances well the rest of them plowing through this course which is getting churned up more and more each lap with the hundreds of feet passing over it Megan Keith can pick her line through these worst patches and that's an advantage if you're back in a pack you really can't see much of the ground in front of you you've got you're avoiding heels and spikes and elbows and you've got mud spraying up into your face but out in front you really can pick your line your foot placement and there is a lot of skill in that and uh, patch grab a few meters every minute and I think Megan Keith is doing that now because that gap has indeed grown to 30 metres, Cal. Yeah, and despite her track credentials, you know, she's a 1456 5,000 metre runner and 852 3,000 metre runner. But I think it's on the cross country where we see Megan Keith the best effect. And as the rain lashed down yesterday, as we sat in the Atomium listening to Megan Keith talk, she said, yeah, we've brought the weather from Britain. And she said she'll feel right at home in this mud. She will not be troubled in any way by this if anyone thought that was going to be a leveller for the 21-year-old Briton. She lives in Inverness, Inverness Harrier, but goes to college in Edinburgh. I'll tell you what's interesting, though, for Megan Keith. You know, she ran in the World Championships in Budapest last summer. She was selected by Great Britain to run in the 5,000 metres in the uh, Hungarian capital. And that experience, even though she went out in the heat, that experience learning with that, to deal with that pressure and everything about going to major championships you accrue that experience you utilize that experience and you come to events like this and you're that little bit more comfortable in the environment of the team hotel with other athletes around you which many many people who are new to it find intimidating but Megan Keita is already pretty experienced at the age of 21 she's running a very very mature dominant race uh, Cal and uh, I can't see her getting caught now I mean that gap is 50 meters and more no, I mean, she, two years ago in Dublin on a very course with very similar conditions, I'd say she was the European under-20 champion. Second last year to that brilliant sprint finish with Nadia Badakledi, but without Badakledi in the category this year, Megan Keith, to be honest, could have been tempted to step up to the senior category, but as she said at the press conference yesterday, she's like, I don't want to skip any steps, and I have unfinished business in the under-23 category, and that she does. And given she got silver last year, we all know what that means. She's going to not settle for anything less than gold and looks to be well on her way at this still very early stage of this race before 2,000 metres. Well, Great Britain leading the uh, team race and pretty comfortably at the moment from Spain and Belgium. Netherlands in fourth, France fifth, Poland in sixth, with Norway in seventh and uh, Ireland closing out the top eight. Megan Keith here looks very, very controlled, doesn't she? Good balance really covering the ground well doesn't have to worry about anything else and I think sometimes you know this isolation of focus you're not worrying about your opposition you're not thinking about anybody else in the corners you can pick the best line you can absolutely gauge your effort your perceived effort is often a much better way of judging how to spread your, your work out through the distance than when you're with other people who are affecting your thinking. Yeah, and I think just psychologically it's such an advantage not to hear any footsteps, because even as you run past, if Megan Keith never looks around for the rest of the race, if someone's closing in on you 20, 30, 40 metres back you can hear it, you can hear it in the crowds they cheer for you, it goes quiet, they'll cheer again for the crowds as we come through. Look at that advantage. Now, we're still early into the race, but there's a reason in the previews that, that were being written up in Athletics Weekly, European Athletics websites, other places about this race, that many of the people writing about this race noted that the biggest ever winning margin at the European Cross Country Championships was Anna Emily Muller of Denmark. Back in 2019, she won this race, the under-23 women's race, by 39 seconds. She put on a clinic on the dry, fast, hilly course in Lisbon, and right now, Megan Keith is doing just that. Cannot see her being called barring disaster as we see the gloopy, thick mud she's running through. One of my teammates before Tim, we went to a race in Belgium, thick mud just like this, and he said, after the race, he said it was right, running through a chocolate cake. And I think that's pretty much what Megan Keith had to deal with there, and all the athletes indeed as they go around that sharp turn. You want the big spikes in today, the javelins as they call them. Well, she's got a 21-second lead. I mean, I thought it looked well over 100 metres when we saw that uh, aerial shot 
just a couple of minutes ago from one of the drones and it is indeed a massive margin and it's growing all the time short stabby powerful steps through that muddy section there from Megan Keith here she is on that uh, difficult corner I mean this is cross country in the raw it really is so focused and not a splat of mud on her of course because she's been in the lead the whole time everybody else will be getting a little bit more covered uh, top half anyway yeah barring disaster I'm sure the photo fin or the finish line pictures will look very good to hang on the wall of Megan Keith assuming no disasters here but as we see Britain in firm command of the team standings 25 points Spain in second no surprises to see them up there either and the Netherlands back in third but there's not much between them in those battles for the minor medals because Belgium 62 points France in fifth on 65 and Germany not far behind at all on 74 but the Brits once again extending that lead they have at the top of the overall medal table in the history of the European cross country championships they are so far ahead and it looks like that will only be growing further today Longfist leading that pack has resigned herself to letting the Britain go and that's probably the wise move because there is a danger of course if you hang on to somebody's coattails when they tear away at a very quick pace that you can destroy yourself and, uh, Megan Keith here is operating at a totally different level to the rest of this field she's used to it I suppose Cal you know she's um used to gauging her effort herself not having to work with anybody else but there's that chasing pack of what two four six yeah absolutely Blomkist who was uh, eighth in this race last year currently though on the way to a much better finish than that trains in Vasa with the senior top finish distance runner Camilla Richardson Blomkist was the 2022 Nordic cross country championship always a tough title to win it does feel like the Nordic countries are just getting stronger and stronger every year at cross country She's leading the way now, but it's very tightly packed amongst those six athletes. And it looks like Ireland's Daniel Donning, and I think it might be coming up there trying to close that gap. And that is a big, like you said, psychological advantage if you could just close in on that gap, sit in the pack. It's physically hard for everyone, but if you can psychologically switch off for a lap or two and just stick only, think only about sticking to the people around you, it'd be a big van advantage in terms of saving your effort for when it matters most. But this is going to be hard. There's no way around this. The next 15 minutes for all these women are going to be grueling, including Megan Keith. Although it always hurts a little less when you're on your way to gold. She can hit that sweet spot now of monitoring her own performance, getting it right, cruising to some degree, but still keeping the work rate high. There's Ferrero goes through. Maria Ferrero, who won the under-20 race last year and took team gold as well. For Spain, she's back in that pack, battling for the minor medals. It's going to be a real dust up for second and third. Megan Keith here, surely, barring disaster, cannot be caught now. And she's flying down that nice little firm running there on that downhill section and around this bend. 37 seconds is her advantage over Blomkis and Van Lent is an astonishing margin she has opened up and remember we're not even at the halfway point the women under 23 running seven kilometers this time so far and again we caution that it's still early days in this race but this is one of the most impressive performances i've ever seen at a european cross country championships and there's just a little gap starting to open there the two fins with the belgian monanen and blomkist and van lengs just pulling away 10 12 meter gap back to matuj always a question how much does an athlete have left so many athletes attempt to come to european cross country championships off the back of a long ncaa season when they've been in hard training since the summer and racing since sometimes the end of august a lot of times they're running on fumes by they get to mid-december but amina matuj is putting in a good effort for the netherlands here to keep herself within sight of the silver and bronze medal she looks so relaxed and yet so deeply focused Megan Keith there doesn't have to worry about anybody else these three locked in the battle for the minor medals great to see Finland with a couple of uh, athletes there in the top four remember the great days of Finnish distance running strength many many decades ago now but maybe these two young women Blomqvist and Mononen at the start of a new generation for Finnish distance running greatness Certainly, they've got a chance of getting a medal each here, but the pack behind them is not far back, and Ferrero of Spain still there. Yeah, Spain in second position at the moment. 
through three and a half kilometers or so in the team standings. Britain still in firm command on 25 points. Spain in second on 52. Netherlands on 58 back in third, but not much back to Germany and France 63 and 68 points respectively as Megan Key comes through. Two long laps to go. I wonder if she's practicing her celebrations at this point in time, mentally, if not physically. <laughs> Well, she's had plenty of practice in recent months, hasn't she? I mean, do you think she won the Cardiff Cross Country? She won the Liverpool Cross Country by 53 seconds. She's in danger of winning today by an even bigger margin than that. 15 minutes on the clock. Seven kilometres, though, this distance. It's a beginning to become a little bit more serious a challenge, isn't it? I mean, what's that, four and a half miles, something like that? Yeah, it's a tough test, especially when you have an athlete like Keith out front putting everyone under the gun from the gun. 47 seconds. An astonishing margin. I mean, if, if this continues, she she's definitely going to go win by over a minute. And how much over a minute? Like we said, 39 seconds, the longest winning margin in the history of any race at the European Cross Country Championships, the Spire European Cross Country Championships. Let's see what sort of demonstration of cross country running Megan Keith can put on here. Former rower she was, and orienteering international as well for Britain. She said about her orienteering career, it was fun but I just wasn't getting the grips with the navigating. Thankfully, all that work is taken out of it here for her today. She just has to follow that route. And two more laps, a gold medal will be waiting. If you get lost on this sort of circuit, then you really are in trouble with your navigating. She's covered her last two 1,500-meter laps, by the way, having negotiated the first lap of one kilometer. They have to do four 1,500-meter laps. Well, she's done two 1,500-meter laps, and each of them, listen to this, was 5.28, 5 minutes 28 seconds, metronomic running from Megan Keith there. No divergence whatsoever over her tempo uh, over the last, uh, what, 10, 12 minutes. It's brilliant stuff from her. Although, as I say that, Cal, am I, is it just the impression we're getting, or is she actually accelerating it? She looks to me like she's digging in. I mean, it looks it. I mean, this is the sign of a true champion, a true... Let's be honest, it is world-class operating, you know, for a 21-year-old to be running well under 15 minutes for 5,000 meters on the track. She didn't have an amazing performance, but a strong performance at the World Cross Country earlier this year. She came in 52nd, but I know if Megan Keith could go back to that in the next few months, I suspect she would run much better than that. But again, champions, I guess, they have the ability to push themselves. They do it every day in training. That's what helps them produce a performance like this. But you see the evidence here. They don't need an athlete around them to have to plumb the depths and just extract every little ounce of energy. And Megan Keith doesn't need to do that. She doesn't need to hurt the way she is, but she is willing to do it and wants to make this a memorable performance. And she's good for this race next year in Turkey. She's 21. She'll still be eligible to retain this title. Don't want to hang it around her neck just yet. A few minutes to go, but uh, she'll be eligible to come back, hopefully, and defend and maybe retain this title. Blomqvist is acting almost as a pacemaker for this little pack here. Mononen and Vicioza and Van Lent. Ferrero just going through a bad patch at the moment, the junior champion last year. But if you're going to be at the front of a pack like this, make it hurt. Try and get some daylight on them. Yeah, and Vicioza there is really running above herself at the moment. She was 14th at the Atapurka cross country last month, 13th in Seville, but wouldn't have been the Spanish athlete you would pick to lead the way here as she currently is, but she is helping Spain to second place in the team standings after we come through the, with two laps to run, 55 points in second, Britain in command with 26, Netherlands in third on 58, and Germans one point behind the Dutch in fourth on 59 points. As you yeah. see this clinic She's managed to pick up a little bit of mud. That must have been on the start line, Tim, on, the, on her right shoulder there. But the rest of her evidence that no one has been around her for the vast majority of this race and yeah. no one else in sight as she swoops left there. You have to feel for Blomqvist and Mononen. They're in the top four, but they're the only two Finns in it. So they won't have a team result. If they did, they'd probably win the team race. Lilna Vindorn has, uh, was a non-starter. She was registered originally, but she has uh, not been on the start line so only two fins in it you discount them from the team race still being led by great britain from spain and the netherlands but if you're only going to have two athletes in the race it's not bad to see them in second and third is it absolutely i'm sure they'll be looking around and danielle donnegan there the irish athlete we haven't mentioned her yet but she's the under 23 champion her boyfriend daryl mcelhenny two years ago in dublin won silver in the men's under 23 category and she's coming through very well the irish team looked like I'm not sure of their provisional standings and our scores here, so we won't 
call that too early, but Danielle Donegan is working herself up into potential medal if she can get up to Monanen and Blomfist and this year also of Spain. She's very close right now as Megan Keith comes through with one lap to run and, and the sound of the bell she hears will be very sweet. Her advantage now, I think, well over a minute. Well, last year, Nadia Badakleti in the Turin winning by winning uh, by, what, 15 seconds over Megan Keith. But that was only over just under six kilometres, 5,770 metres, whereas today at seven kilometres gives uh, Megan Keith the opportunity to win by a much, much bigger margin. It is more demanding, therefore. Millard, by the way, the bronze medalist last year, is back in about, what, about eighth place, or is it tenth place? They had Ashley's back left of picture for Great Britain. She's the second-place British athlete. And a word there, because look in that, you wouldn't miss the Lithuanian singlet, but Greta Karinaskaite is coming through there into fifth, and she is powering through the field. Lithuania has never won a medal of any colour in any event at the Aspire European Cross Country Championships, and she is gunning for that now. History against her, but form on her side. She is closing down on the two fins and the Spaniard out front. There she is in the yellow and green, Greta Karinaskaite could be on her way to making and paving a new path for Lithuania. So Megan Keith, then, if anything has accelerated, I talked a few minutes ago about her sort of uh, incredible evenness of tempo, 5.28, 5.28 for the two previous 1,500 metre laps. One minute 18 the gap now, her last lap was 5.27. A gap now over the opposition, 1 minute 18. This surely is going to be the biggest winning margin in any race ever at the European Cross Country Championships. Do you want to know something, Tim? It's not only the biggest winning margin, it is exactly with one lap to run double the second biggest winning margin ever. Annie Emily Muller in 2019 won this by 39 seconds and Megan Keith with double that advantage and still 1,500 metres to run. And look at her, she is not slowing down. That's what you wonder what she'd have done if she'd been in the senior race, doesn't it? I mean, you know, that'll, that'll come in, in a couple of years' time, but she'd have given a pretty good account of herself. Certainly. I'm sure Nadia Badakleti and Carolina Birkley Graudel, the two big favourites, possibly going head to head in that senior race later on this evening for, or this afternoon for gold. I'm sure they're out busy warming up, not watching this, but if they do watch it back, I'm sure they'll be pleased they weren't going up against Megan Keith today because she is putting everyone under the cosh in a major way. Well, a team competition being led by Great Britain with 27 points over Spain's 52. And I think Germany were 50, or the Netherlands were 52 as well. Yeah, in fact, so Great Britain, Germany and France, 1, 2, 3 now. Great Britain way out in front so far. Yes. There's a Belgium and dropped back to fourth. You want to see the home nation get medals, don't you? You do. I think there's a lot of high hopes for the senior men's in terms of the Belgians' individual and team medal contenders later on, but it'd be great to see them get one on the board here early. They've been brilliant hosts, and there's such a good atmosphere. Even in our little space-age booth that we're in here, Tim, we can still hear the noise leaking through. And now in the team standings, most of the big contenders have gone through that final lap with three athletes, and we can conf confirm that Great Britain are out front with 27, Germany in second on 52, Spain in third on 55, and then it's very close behind them, the Dutch on 60 and France on 62. So silver and bronze medals still up for grabs behind them, but Britain full command out front. Fantastic to see these two Finnish athletes in second and third. Monon and Blomqvist having their own little domestic dust-up. And they are clear now of third. Well clear by the looks of things. Both of them looking in control. Blomqvist looking very strong indeed. The Nordic cross-country champion of last year. Great 1500 metre speed too. She's got that wonderful combination that's so hard to find of speed and strength as she accelerates past her teammate Monon and there. But I tell you what. Megan Keith here is giving us a masterclass of cross-country running. Yeah, Vitiosa there of Spain hanging on well, and as I mentioned, the Lithuanian Karina Skaita is still holding on strongly, but these two fins, as it's been, if we take Megan Keith out of it, they've been from the start two of the strongest athletes, the, the two strongest athletes in that chasing pack, and they do not look like they're going to surrender anything to Megan Keith. That's the first time in almost seven kilometers of running we've seen a smile on Megan Keith's face. And as much as she's no doubt hurting, I'm sure she could have tempo ran her way to victory here because Megan Keith, 21 years old, the Scot, 
is on fire here and I think sometimes you just have to stand back and applaud and that's what the crowd is doing here the non-British crowd they can, uh, it's, it's almost scarcely credible how far in front she is you know she will pass and then they have there it is 85 second advantage she's not just going to have the biggest winning margin ever it's going to be more than double it might even go out over 90 seconds by the time this race ends Megan Keith European under 20 champion two years ago silver last year that is very much going to be upgraded to gold and what a feeling this must be it was a sprint finish two years ago when she won that gold in Dublin it's going to be nothing of the sort high-fiving her way <laughs> she's almost in the home stretch you'll have to she wants to do a bit of steeplechase and she can jump that Gruyere sign but she's out she's catching sight of the finish and Megan Keith there'll be lots of senior success in her future but for today it's about under 23 gold for the Great Britain Megan Keith magnificent and you're right that uh, winning margin well it's going to be pushing two minutes by the time the rest of them come through that is superhuman brilliant running from Glock, Blonk, Mononen and Blomqvist and it does look like Mononen I thought Blomqvist had broken clear of a compatriot but it is Mononen of Finland Blomqvist of Finland who can take the second and third positions they've stuck to the task haven't they resolutely you know if you take Med and Keith out of it it would have been a great battle back there for, for the gold <laughs> Yeah, it's very appropriate here as well with Minonen coming through. Two years ago, she was fourth in the under-20 race. Last year, she was third in the under-20 race. On her first step up, the 19-year-old is going to get the silver medal. She's gone fourth, third, and second. Although, she might have a little trouble upgrading that to gold next year if Megan Keith decides to hang around in the under-23 category. But maybe with that unfinished business now finished, she might decide to step up to senior. But Ilana Monen and the 19-year-old Finn is so impressive here as she powers through. She was the European under 20, 3,000 meters and 5,000 meter champion on the track two years ago. And now she is a silver medalist for the first time at the European cross country with a couple more years to come. Brilliant run by the first of the flying fins. Not far back at all and just hanging on there is Blomkvist, she is going to take the bronze medal, fighting for every step because she was being closed down on by Maria Viciosa of Spain the fins drop exhausted and she, indeed it was Monin in there taking the silver, Blomkvist in third, Viciosa in fourth and the winning margin 1 minute 23 seconds unbelievable Staggering, simply staggering display from Megan Keith as you see Daniel Donegan coming across there for Ireland. Brilliant running for 20 year old Ferrero Toot to finish there in uh, sixth place. The under 20 champion from last year. Expect her to move up a few places next year. Karina Skyte of Lithuania. Yeah, as you said rightly, Cal. That's uh, an unusual, great run from uh, a Lithuanian vest in this sort of company. Yeah, just seven seconds off the medal that Lithuania has been waiting a long time for her. But with her on the scene, I'm sure it'll come in the years ahead. As you see there, just so relaxed, Megan Keith. You do wonder if there was an athlete chasing her down or anywhere in her vicinity, just what that winning margin could have been if she really, really wanted. But I think from about 600, 800 meters out, she was like, you know what? These chances to win a European title at your leisure don't come along often, if at all, in most champions' careers. So she was dead right to high-five the fans, savour that moment, the downhill run to the finish. Well, Mononen, European junior champion at 3,000 a couple of years back. It's almost a minute slower than Megan Keith at 5,000 metres. And her run to date for the silver, 1 minute 